Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be going over the schema builder and how to use the schema builder in your day-to-day -day data modeling creation. So to get there, we're gonna go from the homepage or wherever you really are within Salesforce, click setup, then go to there from the back end of Salesforce or the admin back end of Salesforce, search for schema builder and click or double click on it. And that should bring you to the schema builder. So the schema builder is a really awesome tool. You know, I'm gonna refresh cause it's looking a little funky. A schema builder is a really awesome tool to visualize a lot of relationships within Salesforce. Let's zoom this out. Um, and to show you the, the objects at a glance. So as you can see, currently we ha only have two objects here. We have the account over here, as well as the opportunity on the left-hand side. Let's talk a little bit about what the different things within the schema builder and what they look like. So of course, anything that has a red bar next to it, so these different fields like close date, created by forecast category, those are gonna be required fields. So you need to have a number or you need to have an input for whatever is being asked by that field. So a close date, you have to have a close date on your opportunities. You have to have a forecast category. Um, you have to have an opportunity name and owner as well as on the account, you need to have account name, account owner, created by, last modified by. And then let's talk about how this can show different relationships. So we have an opportunity in the account. Anything with the blue line is going to be a lookup relationship. Anything with a red line is going to be a master detail relationship. So currently we have a blue line between the account and the opportunity. And you can tell which one the child is because it has the little uh, three arms going down into the child object, whereas the parent will always have the the one arm. And that's for both lookup and master D. It kind of looks like they have like three children or maybe like an octopus missing a couple arms, but that's kind of how you can tell which one is parent and which one is child. Now, it's really awesome that you can show all of almost all the relationships. I just hit select all. We have a lot of different relationships between these objects and it can get pretty confusing when you're doing with all of these different relationships. But if I were to go to clear all, we could start with a fresh clean slate and then add in the different objects that we wanted to visualize here. So I've added three of them. Let's go ahead and let's auto layout this so then we can see it. All right, now we have account and asset. So it has a couple different relationships um, between the account and the asset relationship. And then we have another for activity that isn't really showing too much right now. All right, so I want to go ahead and clear this and show you another really awesome tool that we can use with the schema builder. We can create objects and we can add in some fields here. So let's go ahead and create an object. You have to click and drag it, and then you'll need to create the different metadata or add in the different metadata. So I'm gonna have this be project, projects. And I'm looking, I'm gonna allow reports, activities, field history tracking, have it be deployed and hit save. So we, this is going to load up a new custom object. This is really awesome if you are going to create um, a few different objects that have a few different relationships and you need to have that relationship visualized. So then one, it's easier to understand what you're doing and two, so that way you can create the right relationships without having to go through um, the object manager, which can get really sticky and it's a lot of clicking and this just helps save time. So other things that we can do other than doing objects, we can add different number fields. So let's say I wanted to add an auto number, let's say project number. I'm gonna have this be the same format that the help text is giving us. And the starting number will be one. 
and I'm going to hit save. And there we have created a project number field. So now let's say we wanted to add a relationship between two different objects. Uh, let's see, let's search for opportunity. All right, I'm gonna hit auto layout. Then we have these two next to each other and we can get working on it. I'm gonna move this a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and create a lookup relationship from project and look up to the opportunity. So to create this relationship and make this a little bit easier, we're going to go to lookup and the field label is going to be related opportunity. And then we're going to relate this to the opportunity if we can find it. All right, opportunity. And it's going to show us that the child relationship name is going to be the project's object. One thing about master detail and lookup relationships is that you're always going to want to start on the child object when creating those and create them on the child object. One thing that really helps me because those relationships are somewhat similar, they go between two different objects, is that they're always going to be looking up to another object. So that's how I kind of remember which one's going to be the child and which one is going to be the master, regardless of if it's a lookup relationship or master detail. That can be kind of confusing on the admin exam I know and the app builder exam where they have object A and object B. But just remember that the you're going to be creating the field on the child and having it look up to the parent object or the master object, whichever one, if it's a lookup relationship or a master detail relationship. So I'm going to hit save here. And there you go. You can see that we now have a lookup relationship between project and opportunity where opportunity is the, uh, the parent and then the project is going to be the child of the two. And you can create other fields here. It's really useful to do this if you're going to be creating a lot of fields on a new object, especially, and if you need to relate that new object to other objects. But that is kind of the basics of using the schema builder within Salesforce. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you're feeling generous. You can check out the Salesforce courses we have down below or on salesforceupskill.com. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the description box and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.